Why aren't you using the cloud? This is a question asked by many modern businesses and one that AWS is stepping forward to solve. As you continue to build out your infrastructure, our goal is to ensure that every new data location comes back to the overall vision of getting every customer to AWS and making sure it's the only cloud they see in their sky. With the highest market share, Amazon is leading the packs to capture those customers moving to the cloud. With a high profitability in this industry, it's important to note that as it moves further and further to consolidation of few key players, <laughs> building out your infrastructure has become more important than ever before. So these industry trends, as well as some strategic considerations, led us to our three main criteria. First, data security. Data security is one of your core competencies. There's no way you can get new consumers if you're not protecting the data of your current ones. On top of this, we want to make sure we're looking at countries that really provide this. The second one would be cost savings. We want to continue Amazon's current trend of passing on cost savings onto consumers. This is included in whether that be fixed costs, variable costs, or any ways in terms of uh, prior prioritizing those cost savings. And third would be growth potential. So this criterion is actually a good opportunity for AWS to move into different regions. For example, a country that has a high growth priority could possibly have businesses that are growing and thus have their own private clouds, but have the need to move on to the public cloud whether or not they even know that. So these three characteristics come together in order to lead us to three main countries. These being Iceland, Portugal, and Argentina. While these three, three, these three categories are in all three countries, we see that they each have their own strong suits and each lead to the entire vision of moving as many people onto the public cloud as possible. So first, let's look at data security. The requirements we looked at for data security were governmental and, and economic stability, the risk for natural disasters, as well as data security measures within each country. So for Iceland, according to the UN and World Economic Forum, it is the third best country in the world for data security, which ensures that there will be minimal threats to the data of your clients. Second, Iceland also has a very low risk of natural disasters at just 1.52%, as there is little to no volcanic activity and zero seismic risk. And lastly, Iceland has had consistent GDP growth and political stability since its 2008 financial crisis. Next, let's look at Portugal. Portugal is the ninth best country in the world for data security, according to the UN and WEF. It also has low risk of natural disasters at just 3.45% due to low seismic risk, and it is very politically and economically stable, according to the BBC. Lastly, we have Argentina. Argentina is the most data secure country in South America. In recent years, there have been a lot of laws passed related to cybersecurity and cyber crimes. It also has very low risks of natural disasters at just 3.56%. Now, on the other hand, there, I, Argentina is a little bit more politically unstable than the first two countries we have mentioned. However, according to the 2018 Index for World Economic Freedom, uh, judicial effectiveness, monetary freedom, and financial freedom are all on the rise in Argentina. So while there is a little risk of instability in this region, because it is the most data secure and least unstable country in a continent as important as South America, we think that expanding there is an appropriate risk for you to take. So overall, by expanding in these three very stable nations, Amazon is taking away the biggest barrier to entry that a lot of customers face when looking at cloud, um, cloud computing, which is being afraid of their data being insecure. When Amazon moves into these three very stable countries, it will not only have the opportunity to take a big market share of growing economies in adjacent countries, but will also increase revenues by taking in late adopters. Now we're going to examine how our three countries of choice contribute to the growth potential requirement, both in access to new user markets and the high demand industries that AWS currently serves. Iceland is a very prospering region with one of the highest uh, growing economies in the developed world. This has created a very prosperous uh, environment for the financial services sector, which currently contributes about 10% to the nation's overall GDP. This is a very strategic focus for AWS because the financial services industry comprises a large percentage of your clients. The Iceland Center would connect the US to Northern Europe where many banks operate and thus be very beneficial to your customers and decrease latency considerably. 
Additionally, the government encourages Icelandic firms to partner with global companies in this new effort to create a um, data-managed services industry. In fact, the government is so enthused by the, by the idea of being a data haven that the parliament is considering cutting corporate tax rates by um, incredible amounts to be one of the lowest in the world. So this attitude towards large companies like Amazon coming into Iceland would create a very hospitable environment for your next data center. Another uh, customer target is the SMB, a small to medium business, as they are heavy users of cloud technology. In Portugal, there are 81 SMBs per 1,000 inhabitants, which is more than double the average of the EU. Uh, we can see already that two of the largest media and telecom Portuguese-based companies are expanding their data footprint in the region to respond to the growing demand for digital services. This plethora of options from private to hybrid cloud uh, poses a challenge for SMBs in the region, and an AWS data center would increase Amazon's presence and its ability to compete with these alternatives. Additionally, Portugal is part of a larger expansion plan with its close proximity to Turkey and Egypt. They are two of the top 10 global growth generators as identified by Citibank analysts. Because these countries lack the stability and infrastructure to expand directly into them, um, we can't justify doing that yet, but the emerging economies will uh, benefit greatly from an adjacent availability zone. And finally, we arrive at a region that's growing exponentially. The cloud computing market in Latin America is expected to grow at a CAGR of more than 29%. A major catalyst of this is smartphone penetration. According to Cisco, by 2019, 90% of the mobile data traffic will be generated by cloud solutions. As you know, Amazon already has a foothold in Brazil where there is a booming e-commerce industry. However, we believe due to these high growth expectations, it would be extremely beneficial to add a second zone in Argentina to improve the overall in infrastructure and stability. Uh, additional revenue indicators would be government buy-in and the economic productivity. Behind Brazil, Argentina is one of the top 10 emerging economies by GDP, and the government is rapidly encouraging the expansion of cloud technology with things like a $23 billion growth acceleration plan. Uh, a final point to make is that Currently established AWS clients are at a pivotal point of their expansion. They're looking at these high risk and high reward markets such as Latin America. And so if AWS puts data centers in close proximity to these new users, it will combat one of the major obstacles currently. And that's a higher than average latency. Overall, we think that these three countries will uh, establish flexible routes to new markets, as well as create greater uh, access for more capacity for those established clients. By looking at the industries and economies that uh, are central to the widespread adoption of the cloud, we think that our plan uses the customer-centric approach that explains Amazon's past success and future potential. Moving forward, these three countries also offer long-term saving, long savings for AWS uh, moving forward. So ranked number one as a data location center in 2006, 2016, excuse me, Iceland has renewable energy sources from geothermic and hydroelectric opportunities. PwC did a, uh, a study over a 15-year period showing Iceland saved $130 million as a data center location versus elsewhere in another European country. And as Rebecca mentioned, with tax cuts on the horizon, this is another opportunity for Amazon to capitalize on. Moving forward, Portugal also offers the same cost energy benefits with hydro and wind power um, options. In March alone, Portuguese production of energy uh, far exceeded their consumption, a feat not seen in the renewable energy market. Also, um, as you can see on the left-hand side, this building was built by a Portuguese telecom uh, communications company. It's run by solar energy and it has a moat around the outside of it, creating a micro microclimate that cuts costs considerably. This is another route Amazon could take when expanding in to save their costs. Lastly, we're looking at Argentina. Argentina is on the path to become the most renewable country in South America. 
Also, it provides a unique development opportunity for a data center. So picture this, uprooting your traditional data center and putting it on a boat. Sounds crazy, water, electricity, how they mix, they do. Uh, Nautilus Data Technologies has created a barge with a data center on top of it. It offers 30% cost savings versus traditional routes. Why? Because it uses seawater for cooling instead of those pricey cooling towers. Further, Argentina has Los Niños, a port that offers that's an intersection of underground sea cables as the prime opportunity to expand here. Um, so other companies are already working on this, are already moving towards water for their data centers, or they're already putting data centers underground, underwater. This is the way of the future, and this is how AWS is going to radicalize how they get the cloud to the public. So overall, these three countries further Amazon's long-term goal of sustainability, innovation, and customer cost savings. They also boost AWS's brand presence as being environmentally friendly, as well as having operational excellence. So to analyze the impact of our solutions, we decided to run a financial analysis on the three various countries we wanted to move into. What we saw was that generally, what we, our primary goal was to beat Wall Street's expectations. In order to do this, we wanted a positive increase in earnings per share, and we saw that across all three countries, this was, impossible, was possible. So in terms of a long-term growth, we also wanted to look at net income, if these sites would be, have a positive value or if they were going to be, have a cost on Amazon. What we see in the first few years is that they are actually positive and so that it's a worthwhile investment. So how did we come to these numbers? Well, diving further into Argentina's considerations, what we started off with was our number three criteria of growth. We found that there was a large amount of small to medium businesses that would allow a lot of customers to go onto the public cloud because they previously were on the private cloud. We used this estimation to start with our initial, our initial revenue numbers. From there, we used the Amazon Web Services growth rate as well as the growth rate of the Latin American or South American region in order to see how the revenue projects over the next five years. From there, we looked at different costs, including marketing and acquisition costs of consumers, um, also fixed costs, as Ashley talked about with the barge that saves a lot of money, considerably um, around $20 million. We also, so taking those revenues from the cost, we saw that no matter uh, as much as time that passes by, that we have a positive net income as well as a positive earnings per share, which only increases as time passes by. The most important thing that we gathered from this was that our criteria had direct impact on financial statements. We had the sustainability that saved a lot in terms of variable costs. We had um, the, this multiplier that had 30%, as well as different growth rates and considerations. So now let's look towards future challenges. We believe that after gaining the strong foothold that Amazon can in the three nations we have provided, Amazon will have the ability and security to move forward and take on the challenges that are South Africa and the Middle East. With strong footholds in Bahrain and Portugal, Amazon will be able to fix major latency issues in, this, in these areas that have such a high potential for growth. Because the potential is so vast, it's incredibly important to take a strategic and gradual approach to your expansion. We believe that the three countries we have presented today will contribute to the short-term successes of uh, growth of new users as well as the expanded use by existing users. But more importantly, these three countries um, have a long-term impact on the communities that AWS will reach with its offerings. Iceland, Portugal, and Argentina are the stepping stones to creating an all-encompassing cloud network with the AWS name on it. Thank you so much for your time and we're open to any questions. where any business wants to launch a new platform, including AWS. You think about energy and cybersecurity, um, pro-regulation and tax. But talk to me and us about the scope of the number of customers. And you, know, you had a billion dollars up there, but how many customers are there really, potentially, in Iceland compared to, for instance, Egypt, that you brought up as one of the uh, geographical areas that Portugal could reach out to? So you, you know, talk to me about Iceland, yeah. and then why didn't you use Egypt if that's the case? So you do uh, notice something very interesting. Iceland is 
less in line with the growth potential requirement compared to Argentina and Portugal. However, we thought it was necessary because we have the experimental technology with the barge. We have um, uncertain markets in Argentina. You will always need a strong foundation as your users grow to back up data. You might as well be saving a lot of money in Iceland. Um, even if that doesn't mean you're gaining a large market share with the actual customers in Iceland. But with the banks, who are very open to partnering with large companies like uh, AWS, they would use uh, these cloud technologies to work abroad. They have uh, global expertise, and they're looking at s cloud solutions, too. So that would be... So, so what's the number of the size of the market of Iceland compared to Portugal? compared to Argentina, or compared to Egypt or Turkey or some other country you consider? I believe the growth rate was 15% for Argentina. Uh, Swetha can correct me on the Iceland growth rate. Was it? It was half that, about like 7%. Yeah. And that was just based on the natural growth of the economy. Uh, we didn't assume that um, there would be much additional growth based on like targeted uh, customer acquisition. So um, in terms of Iceland, what we wanted to do was in that region target more of the larger companies who kind of are already with AWS um, and expand the amount that they're using. Um, in Argentina and Portugal, we're going to those SMBs, those small to medium businesses. So kind of just focusing in on Iceland. When we have these larger companies, what we're trying to do is rather give them more data to use or more capacity rather than get new customers and acquire those new customers. You mentioned uh, SMBs, um, and uh, I'm wondering why do you think that is uh, an important target market for AWS? And can you support that by telling me what our what our the extent of our customer base with with SMBs and, for example, the U.S. So the reason that we wanted to target SMBs is because in this industry, switching costs are very high. Once you're on a cloud, it's very difficult to kind of move over um, and get into a new one. So when you have these smaller businesses who are likely either completely on the private cloud or maybe they're using some sort of hybrid, it's much easier to kind of pull them in um, in that way. So that's kind of one of the reasons why we thought that that would be an apt reason to have that as a criteria. Um, in terms of how much of the percentage use in the United States, that is a number that I think would be a little bit different as compared to other countries, just because I feel there are a lot more larger corporations based in the United States. Um, but that's definitely something that we'd want to look into if um, in the future. Okay. Um, so AWS is already present in Ireland. So what was the next country you will replace that? In Iceland? Instead of Iceland, where else? So I think uh, going off of the long-term expansion plan, uh, there is potential in Africa. If you have that Portugal data center, you could enter from the north. There is a lot of speculation about the opportunity in South Africa. But actually, if you go to um, slide about 70, I believe, uh, we think that's more of a long-term goal. So we agree that Africa is somewhere to set our sights on. But um, for many of these reasons, it's not uh, the move right now. But once that infrastructure starts growing, the energy supply becomes more stable, uh, we would join like, competitors like Microsoft in that region. We just think that Portugal um, would be a more strategic move uh, that can help you expand into these markets with lower risk. Uh, I saw on slide 13 you're talking about how Portugal can uh, go to, the, I think, for the Middle East, for example. Where do you see Iceland and your, the other options? Where do you see them? Besides the home country, where else can they um, use their uh, uh, facilitated clients? If you go to um, slide 69, I believe, if you look at the latency maps uh, for the overall, it might be one behind, the overall Latin America market, um, they are all orange on a spectrum of green to red. That means that uh, your current clients 
trying to expand and take advantage of the e-commerce industry, uh, they will not be able to do so successfully because of high uh, time for page loads, things like that. So we think uh, the Argentina focus could actually cater to that entire Latin American market. The mobile, uh, the stats on the mobile smartphone growth is important because app developers and retailers use this as a, an indicator for entering a high revenue potential emerging economy. <coughs> And so uh, those are who AWS serves, those app developers who are looking at Mexico and Brazil, uh, places in Latin America as a whole. So if we um, improve the latency map, it's in the appendix slides, that would be a main focus. Okay. So one of your top criteria was around data security, and many of us resonate with that, um, and you cite a very strong uh, legal environment in each of these three countries. But I'd like you to evaluate <clears throat> the environment in each of those three countries uh, in the context of the actual uh, legal criteria around data security versus actual what is actually enforced in terms of the regulation that's there. Help us understand uh, which ones are really wa wa walking what they say their, 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 their environment is. Sure, so um, you bring up a really good point. We would have to do uh, extra research and I thank you for bringing that up. Um, I believe if you look at this map, um, the reason uh, like Argentina is uh, more secure than others is because the government has the money to spend on efforts to enforce it. So we looked at that as a factor, but we'd have to dive deeper into the enforcement. And some of the stuff that we cited in our presentation was more like rankings and listings rather than specific laws. And so I think that kind of takes that to account. Um, I think when news sources such as the UN and um, the other citations we made make these lists, they are looking at whether people are, you know, walking the walk or just talking the talk. And I think the laws are kind of where if we are just citing laws, then maybe that's more ambiguous as to what's actually happening. Yeah, just kind of to add on to Swetha's point, this map does take all of those considerations into account. It's not just, um, you know, who's saying they're secure, it's who is actually secure because, as I mentioned for uh, Argentina, in a report by the World Economic Forum, it talks about how judicial effectiveness is on the rise. So all of those things are taken into account when these um, rankings are presented to you. Um, I think I didn't see a lot of analysis on labor and access to um, high-skilled labor for to support these data centers. So can you give me, uh, this is your opportunity to maybe show us some of the analysis that you've had uh, as part of your criteria that you mentioned. So when we were analyzing, um, I guess, the various options, one of the things that we did look at was whether or not there was a skilled labor force, and that's one of the reasons that we ruled out um, South Africa and African nations, because uh, although it's a period or a area of high growth potential, that was one of the reasons that we decided not to include it. So the countries that we did include, um, we operated under the assumption, or like once we had done some initial research, that that's what we were going to move forward with. And I, I think to go off of that point, it's not just serving the labor force that would be using it in that region, but the companies that operate outside of that region that have the skilled labor force, they're trying to enter those markets. And so we're helping them do that, and they'll be buying more cloud capacity because they're trying to enter them. Not necessarily because um, the people in that actual country are using those solutions. So I'll take you back to Argentina. Mm -hmm. um, you have the, the <coughs> slide that shows the fiber optic cables coming in South America. Would you mind looking back for that? Just the version I have is tiny. So. <laughs> it's slide 18. So I, I, I take it that you believe that by putting uh, our data centers in Argentina, aside the fact that you want to do it in a very risky way, perhaps, on a barge, um, uh, you believe that that will serve South America? So we believe it's an entry point, another entry point to South America. Because right now the geo redundancy is not there and hasn't been built up. Um, there is one in Brazil, 
but we believe there needs to be more. So Argentina looks like to be the most optimal place to put this. And then in that long-term expansion plan, we think about putting more, expanding more further into South America. Uh, I'm just wondering, why, why did you choose Argentina versus you know, one of the countries on the, on the Pacific coast? Because if you look at your bioptic cable map, Argentina's at the very end. And then you jump up a couple of hops or cities and you hit Sao Paulo. Sure. So you're kind of, you're kind of, you're not helping as far as I can tell, unless you uh, I think, show me otherwise, yeah. how you're helping with you know, latency and issues like that and connectivity uh, to other countries in South America. I think that w it was an option we considered in looking at the, the geography as a whole. The trade off came with geography versus the climate. Um, and the criteria we used really focused on, you know, what is going to be a successful climate to expand into. So it is a trade-off we consider. You know, we're sacrificing that in the short term, but in the long term, as we move to further geographic expansion, we can fix latency problems um, moving forward. And if you do believe that the barge is a high-risk uh, situation, it's more reason to go back to the foundational criteria such as uh, data security, which is stronger in Argentina than the coastal countries that you mentioned. So we've actually seen that a lot of Amazon's competitors are moving more into water. Um, so Microsoft is doing something underwater. There have been some beta tests. Um, a company called Nauticus is actually doing the barge <coughs> cloud computing because no one really wants to delve into it unless someone else tries it first. So they're kind of being the pioneers in that end. Um, and so when we saw this research, we thought it was a very interesting opportunity. We know that Amazon is kind of always on the cutting edge of whatever's new and what's going on. So we thought that these new benefits, some of them which include you actually need less computing space when you use a barge technology as compared to land. So for example, if it's like 100 square feet on land, you would only need say like 500 square, or sorry, 50 square feet on the barge. Um, and so all these like very interesting benefits is kind of what drew us more into this solution. Well, your long term plan, you pointed out Middle East. Uh, any particular countries you're looking into? Um, I would say uh, starting from Turkey and then moving from the Mediterranean to the Middle East, uh, we would go with that because uh, you already have your sites there. We didn't think that um, an additional zone would be as beneficial. You're, we'll see how well that one goes and then we could work with you to um, expand more. Um, but that's something we'd have to take a closer look at. Um, so when we were looking specifically at Argentina, the biggest thing that we were looking at, um, and I guess the most important cost factor, was the discount you get when you're utilizing the barge. So Ashley mentioned this in her in the presentation, but it was around a 30% decrease in terms of cost. Um, and so when we took that information and applied it to the sheer amount that goes into these data centers, when we're dealing with money in the millions, that 30% really adds up. Um, and we found that even though barges are technically more expensive than land in Argentina, we were very interested to see the fact that it technically made it cheaper. Um, and then part of our deep dive also included more industry research. So we discovered that variable costs are much more important in cloud computing as compared to fixed costs because it's the power and the energy that kind of goes into that asset. So when you're saving money off your power and your energy, that's something that we really took into account when creating the financial model. Um, and then also growth rates were something that was that were very important in this in, in this region. Time. 